Understanding the big picture issues will help those who work in, manage, or have responsibility for the accounts payable function understand why small details related to the accounts payable function matter so much. Sometimes the minutiae can seem like unnecessary make work until you understand what can go wrong, often to the detriment of the bottom line, if these issues are ignored. Make sure you stick around until the end when we discuss one issue that has become increasingly ugly, unfortunately, and one that only has become an issue in recent days. Big picture issue number one, every accounts payable department is different. They've got many similarities, but the fine details are different, which often leads to different processes. Let me explain. I wanna compare accounts payable to two houses, two identical houses. When you stand outside, you look at them, they have the same number of rooms, the same layout, etc. But once you go inside, they may have different furniture. People may have painted the walls a different color. Some may have, have added a fireplace. Some may have turned one bedroom into an office. Somebody might have a pool in the backyard, while somebody else might have a vegetable garden. Somebody has a deck. There are all sorts of different changes that can be made to, to a house, and similar with the accounts payable function. So I like to think of the accounts payable function as just the framework, if you will. And then here are some of the different things that will impact different accounts payable departments. So the, the first one involves invoices and the types of invoices that you get. Depending upon your industry, you might get more complex or less complex invoices. If you're a smaller organization, you may not get as many invoices because you may put a lot of your payments on to automatically have them paid with a credit card. If you're a, a hospital, for example, or other type of medical facility, you may get very complicated invoice with many line items of different band-aids and bandages and medicines and things of that nature. So that's one way accounts payable departments differ from organization to organization. The second factor is how much automation is used. Okay, and this, there, this can vary greatly from those organizations who have almost completely automated either their invoice automation, their invoice process, or their whole procure to pay chain to others who are using either no automation or very little automation. The next big difference revolves around payments, how payments are made and what payment vehicles are used. Some organizations might pay everything with a check. And as you know, the more paper checks you issue, the more manual intensive that process can be. And it's apt to take more time. While others may have moved on and are making a lot of payments through ACH and P cards, which tend, not a guarantee, but tend to require less work than paper checks. Some others, especially if you're a smaller organization, will put a lot of your activity on P cards. And then of course you might do some wire transfers. So depending upon the mix of how you pay your bills will depend upon how much time actually ends up getting devoted to payments. Also, if you are aggressively going towards moving uh, payments from paper checks to ACH and P cards, that also will take more time. Next, next issue where companies or organizations can differ when it comes to their accounts payable function is what exactly is handled in the accounts payable uh, base. Virtually every company handles the processing of invoices within accounts payable, but there's a lot more. And we're going to talk so about some of the regulatory issues that are handled in accounts payable a little bit further on, but we also have things like T&E, sometimes petty cash ends up there. Sometimes there's a whole bunch of different, different items. I could spend a lot of time on that. Uh, we actually did one talk on 107 different tasks that are handled in accounts payable, and we'll try and put a link to it up there or up there, whichever it is, um, so that you can look at that if you you're interested. The next issue that makes one organization look different from the next organization revolves around corporate culture. Uh, so many times we'll have a recommended best practice that we'll talk about, but an organization won't use it in their organization because they'll say things like, oh, we would never ask our employees to do that, and while well, others are more stringent. So this will um, impact exactly why some accounts payable groups are different than others. And along with that goes what I, what I refer to as personal nuance. And this is sometimes when you'll have an executive, usually a higher level executive who has a personal bias that you must do something a certain way or you can't do something another way. And this also makes for differences. So for example, we'll see the issue comes up most frequently or it's easiest to understand, if you will, um, when we talk about cards, giving employees company credit cards, P cards, and a few organizations, even though they know it would be a best practice to use and it would help them.
in and parts of their organization they don't use it and the reason that they don't use it is they'll say like our CFO says no that we can't we can't give P cards so you'll have those personal nuances come into play this by the way is also more like apt more apt to happen if you're a privately held organization but it can happen in public companies also I don't want to give you the idea that it's a private company issue only these issues by the way are why it makes it so difficult to benchmark one accounts payable organization or function against another one it's very hard to compare because very rarely are you comparing apples with apples now these guiding principles are generally the same best practices strong internal controls etc but how they are executed might be very different for you know the various different types of functions that, that we have this is just one reason why it is so important um, that even experienced professionals when you first hire them are given training it's so important it's also so important why you have a detailed a travel and entertainment policy a reimbursement policy your accounts payable policy and procedures manual is detailed because everybody is different and it's the little nuances that, that are different and everybody has their own way of doing it okay I'm going to stop talking about that and I'm going to move on now to big issue uh, big picture issue number two and this is something that many people will find a little strange but if you've worked in accounts payable or probably even in Treasury um, you're probably aware of it and that is if you pay someone too much or you pay them twice or you pay them for something that they were supposed to cover like let's say freight they included freight on their invoice and you had agreed that, that they would pay it you cannot automatically assume that they will give the money back a few will to be perfectly honest fair a few will some will issue a credit memo which has its own host of other issues and problems but others will simply pocket the money and hope you don't know it now this issue absolutely astounds many professionals when they first take over accounts payable either because they literally have never thought about it or they just can't believe it but frighteningly in addition to this there's a good number who will either hide the funds or worse try and get you to repeat the mistake that led you to paying them twice in the first place they try and get you to repeat the same mistake over and over again to their financial gain and your financial detriment this is why I'm going to make such a big deal about some of the other steps as we go along and why it's so important that you get all those little details right because even if you do get your money back let's say you pay somebody twice and they, they return it first of all you're out the money and the interest on that money and second of all it takes a bit of time and effort to get that money back big issue big picture issue number three you want to make sure that you include all strong internal controls including appropriate separation of duties which is becoming a, a big issue for many organizations due to smaller and smaller accounts payable departments thanks to technology we're seeing accounts payable departments get smaller and smaller there wasn't a time well there was, it was quite a while ago if you will where you know some of these fortune 500 type companies especially the ones at the top of the fortune 500 list it was not unusual to hear about them having an accounts payable department with over 100 employees we we rarely run into that anymore thanks thanks to technology so our departments are getting smaller and smaller and this sometimes make internal controls difficult to incorporate sometimes also internal controls fly right in the face of efficiency and they actually increase work let me give you a simple example one of the the big internal control changes that we've seen we've had to incorporate in the last few years which we haven't but we didn't have in the past was that accounts payable processes or uh, master vendor file processes whoever it is who's handling this now have to verify all emailed change of bank account requests that come in because criminals have figured out if they can impersonate one of your suppliers and send an email and get you to send funds to their bank account rather than your supplier's bank account they can get their hands on your money so now it's necessary that you call up and you confirm every single one of these changes because if you fall for one of these phony emails your money's gone and I don't know of a few cases where this has happened and it's been for a lot of money so this obviously won't add to the efficiency of the accounts payable function and other times when you have internal controls they don't add to the efficiency but they do decrease the chance that you'll make a fraudulent or duplicate payment and that you know really benefits the bottom line 
So what we like to say when it comes to internal controls is they should be part of every new process, not just an afterthought. Big picture issue number three, sorry, big picture issue number four, use of the three-way match is, is critical. And this is when you get an invoice in and you match it up against the purchase order that you sent and the receiving documents that arrived with the goods when they, the goods were delivered. Um, now, sometimes people say, well, I don't understand why we have to do this. It's a lot of extra work, and it is, and you send out the invoices for approval and they're approved, why do we have to check? And the answer to, the, to this is simple. Yes, the invoices are approved for payment by whoever um, ordered the goods usually. However, they don't, they, they don't do a good job of checking. In fact, most of them won't check that the price is right. They don't check if they've approved that invoice already. So if you do not use the three-way match, then it is unlikely that you are going to find a duplicate submission of invoices, which by the way, has become a huge problem. And it's, you're not going to find if you paid the right price, you're not going to find if the goods were delivered in total, like if you ordered 100 widgets, did they deliver 100 widgets or did they only deliver 95 widgets, in which case you shouldn't be paying for the last five. So without doing this three-way match, you can't do this verification and you are going to end up spending more than you should. Big picture issue number five, you need a well thought out payment process and plan to take advantage of all the different types of payments, um, which if you use the appropriate payments can make accounts payable more efficient. I'm going to explain how that'll work, but first a minute of all, since we're talking about payments, I want to talk about early payment discounts, which is kind of your first foray into making accounts payable more efficient through um, dealing when you're dealing with big payment issues. And that is that you want to make sure that you try and get every early payment discount that your organization is, is entitled to, because it's probably the best financial return that you're going to get on your money, or your organization is going to get on their money. And while this seems like, yeah, of course, it is sometimes more difficult than it might seem at first glance. You want to make sure your processes are very efficient that you can earn all these early payment discounts. Now, when it comes to payments, at least in the United States, we have a number of different options. We have those awful paper checks. You can pay electronically using ACH, either an ACH debit or credit, same day, next day settlement. You can use a, a card, a P card. You can use a wire transfer. Um, a few small companies are now using instant payments. And how how you craft your payment approach will depend upon you know how efficient you can make your process. Many companies have taken an aggressive stance towards getting rid of paper checks and they are aggressively trying to move to ACH and P cards. And in fact, I saw a statistic that said in the B2B space, um, only 40% of our B2B payments are now being made with paper check. That's great, but we still have a long way to go. And if you're not in the United States, you're probably having a good laugh at our expense, but hey, that's, that's where we are. How efficient your payment process is will also impact how you compare to others. When it comes to paper checks, uh, for example, even when you break that down, there are many ways that can make you more efficient or less efficient. I like to recommend to people that if you are still issuing paper checks, and of course we all are, but if you're issuing just more than a few, that you let your banks do the printing and mailing. They're very efficient at it. It's not a value-added task for you, but, and this is a big but, if you're going to allow the banks to do that, you have to have your own upfront controls in place and they have to be very very strong and stricken. There's a lot that we could discuss about payments but I guess the big picture issue that I want you to go away with from this discussion now is that there are a number of different payment types and we want to get away from the most inefficient payment type which is paper checks and by the way even though we're, we're getting there you should also be aware that when it comes to fraud and I'm going to talk about fraud, fraud uh, when it comes to paper checks is the most commonly type of a attempted uh, payment fraud. It doesn't mean it's successful, but it means that the criminals are attempting. They recognize the, if you will, opportunity involved with paper check. Now, before we get to the evolving nature, and this is not evolving in a good way, I want to make that clear, of fraud and accounts payable, if you're getting value from this talk, I'd love it if you would hit the like or the thumbs up button. It sends a message that you are getting value from the talk and I should make more like it. And a personal thanks from me to everyone who has hit that like button. Okay, moving on to big picture issue number six. Um, I want everybody who's listening to realize that your accounts payable team has become a prime target for fraud, especially with these new electronic payment frauds. And when you think about that, it makes a lot of sense. Your accounts payable team are, are the people who make the payments. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out 
that you know, like you would have really something say if you robs banks because that's where the money is. Our takeaway on that is, you know, you go after accounts payable because they're the ones who have the access to the money and spend it. So they have become a prime target. So what this means is, you know, recognize this. You need to educate your staff on all the issues related to fraud and fraud protection. And everybody needs to be continually alert because criminals are really, really good at finding those tiny loopholes where they can worm their way in and they can take advantage. I've already talked about that change of bank account fraud. Um, not only did they figure out how they could do that and how they could trick people, but they also figured out that if they sent those emails at a point in time where the organization was likely to be busy, the end of the month, the end of the quarter, is there a holiday coming up, then they were more apt to be successful. And in fact, that's precisely what happened at one of the organizations where I know where they're successful. The organization had recognized this new fraud, had put into effect that everything had to be verified, but it came in late on a Friday afternoon. It was, you know, right before a holiday weekend. And the person thought, oh, every single time I call, they say it's legitimate. I'm not going to bother to check this time. And that was the one time when it was a crook and it was a lot of money involved. Okay. So you need to educate your staff and continually educate them. And whenever something new comes up, whenever there's a new fraud, you need to make everybody aware of it because sometimes just knowing that the fraud is going on is all that, that, that your staff needs to know and you want to make them aware as soon as possible because if you wait if you say well I'll wait till the end of the week when we have our staff lunch or the end of the month when we have our staff meeting and I'll update everybody then between now and the time that you have that meeting you, your people could be targeted and one of them could fall and then you have nobody to blame but yourself so make people aware of what the new frauds are and uh, your regular education that's the silver bullet will save you from not all the frauds but a lot of them and uh, make sure you update everybody on a regular basis. You want to use all the best practices that are you possibly can integrate and the controls because it's your money and when it's gone, it's gone and you don't really want to have to answer to management about what happened. And lastly, just as a general overall guiding principle, anytime anything happens that somebody's asking you to do something that's out of the ordinary, verify it because that's how um, a lot of the frauds get through. Uh, people don't, they, they see the request, they don't verify it and then voila, oh, it turns out it's a new fraud. So rather to ask somebody and they say, no, um, that, that was legitimate. And even if they say, well, why are you asking me this? Why don't you just do what I told you to do? You can you can respond that, hey, there have been a lot of new frauds within this area, and that's why I am verifying it before we go ahead and do it. Because you know criminals know that if they can make a sense of urgency, do this right away, do this right away, and secrecy, don't ask anybody, don't tell anybody, they increase the chances of being successful, honestly. Okay, I'll stop talking about fraud. I could go on for a long time, but I'll stop. And now I'm going to talk about big picture issue number seven, and that is regulatory issues. There are a lot of regulatory issues that are handled in accounts payable. We don't think about regulatory issues when we think about accounts payable, but there are a huge number. Um, and I'm going to give you uh, just a few. I'm going to run through them real quickly. Obviously, I'm not going to educate you on them on you because each of them would, would take you know many hours or days. But there's the collection of the W-9s when you set up a new vendor and running it through IRS TIN matching. There's the issuing of 1099s, which is a huge issue every uh, January. Um, the W-9s and the 1099s, you know, are on a domestic basis. You know, their they're counterpart when you're doing business with what's called a non-US person, the W-8s and the 1042s, huge issue um, if your accounts payable team needs to uh, deal with them. In, in addition, many of them will be doing your sales and use tax reporting, uh, your unclaimed property reporting and remitting where appropriate. You're in the medical or pharmaceutical industry or you're impacted by the Sunshine Act, they'll be doing the Sunshine Act reporting. Um, likewise, if you're one of the 6,000 companies impacted and are required to do the conflict mineral, re mineral reporting, which typically goes to the SEC. And then there are other specialty uh, industry reporting requirements, some of which will be handled in accounts payable, some don't. Now, I don't really consider handling expense reimbursements as a regulatory issue, even though it does have some reg regulatory implications or overtones, if you will, mainly that you want to have an accountable plan status when your organization needs to comply with the rules issued by the IRS. But there, there's also that. And in many organizations, expense reimbursement is handled in accounts payable. Those are just some of the issues. So you can see that when we say accounts payable, it's it's more than just paying the bills. Also keep in mind that a lot of the issues that I've discussed, some of them are on the federal level, but many of them are on the state level. And when you come down to the state level, each state has their own rules. God forbid, 
fit and two of them did it alike. They have their own ways of doing things. They often have different deadlines, uh, different places to report, obviously different states, um, and it, the rules can get quite intricate. So there's, that's a whole nother massive technology has played its own role when it comes to regulatory issues. It you know, gives with one hand and it takes with the other. It gives in that it makes some of the regulatory reporting a little bit easier. A lot of it's now being done online. Uh, technology definitely helps in that hand. Unfortunately, the regulatory agencies, both at the federal level and the state level, are also using technology and they are now much better positioned to find out if you've made a mistake or you've done something wrong. So just keep that in the back of your mind. So it's more important now than ever that you get it right. You know, you spend much less a chance of sliding under the radar and nobody will be noticing. Uh, they'll be doing their own sets of, of checking. Also, keep in mind that there are a growing number of issues. It's not like the number, the amount is, is stagnant and yes, technology is helping, but we now have to do, you know, a better job with what we're doing. Nobody's reducing the regulatory uh, reporting requirements. And the big one that I want to make everyone aware of, which, you know, doesn't get talked about that much in the press, but it is a huge issue. And that is that some states, many states now have their own 1099 reporting requirements. So you think if just reporting with the feds was, was a real headache every January or September when B notices show up, now we're also going to have similar issues with the states. And if you want to see if your state has any uh, reporting requirements, what you do is you go to your state website and look for the Department of Treasury and see what their requirements are on the 1099 issue. And now, not surprisingly, big picture number eight is the role of technology and it plays in accounts payable. And while technology, I like to say, has been hovering on the outskirts of accounts payable for a long time, it has been, in the last few years, it has become a more mainstream issue. Um, it's gotten a lot, lot less expensive. There are many third party offerings out there. And it is one that is leading to the evolution of the accounts payable function for almost every single organization, regardless of its size. And that was before AI entered the picture. So technology making big inroads in a big way into our accounts payable space um, in a number of different issues that are impacting it. We've, I've already addressed automation several times. There are several types, um, invoice automation, accounts payable automation, procure to pay automation. When you talk to the suppliers, you need to talk to them about exactly what their offering does because, you know, just like no two accounts payable departments are the same, no two uh, automation offerings are the same. You can't assume anything. And of course, um, AI has is being incorporated into a lot of the automation solutions. We're also seeing AI come at accounts payable and the whole business world. It's not really accounts payable and it's going to change um, the way we're structured, the way we're set up and the way we, we, do, we do business. So it's going to be an interesting time. And I don't know whether you see this interesting as a plus or a minus, but it is going to be interesting. Quite a lot of this technology and AI etc. will lead to um, still smaller accounts payable department and the departments that are left will be focused on analytics, resolving discrepancies and disputes, the uh, regulatory component, um, etc. So there's going to be, there's a lot of work still to be done. And by the way, what I haven't addressed here, uh, because you know, you don't want to spend all day with me, is that um, even though automation is being used in a growing number of organizations, when an organization uh, gets, for example, an invoice automation solution, or all its suppliers don't automatically jump on board and start sending their invoices there. It's, it's a slow process uh, depending upon what solution you've talked and what kind of uh, power or where you stand in the uh, equilibrium with your, your suppliers. So are you the 800 pound gorilla or are you just you know one of the peasants who has to do whatever your supplier wants? So it just depends upon that. But a lot of change coming, AI, technology, um, etc. Smaller IP departments, there's going to be some real in innovation, but there's also going to be some marketplace disruption, if you will, and the, the focus or the, the root cause will be automation and AI. It's going to be a fun time. It's going to be an interesting time. So let's cross our fingers, hold on, and get ready. Technology and automation and accounts payable is becoming increasingly important and commonplace, as I said. Getting it right is critical. That's why we put together an extensive talk on getting started with accounts payable automation, a comprehensive guide, which you can watch right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description. Good luck.